whatever it was. Cinco. Th- yes, wh- episode five. This yeah. is six here, right? Yeah. Right. This is okay. six. All right. So number five, I watched it as yeah. soon as it went out. I'm like, cool. I retweeted it. And I'm like, wait a. Yeah. Before I retweet this, let me watch <laughs> this. And I was like, okay. So Steve's in yeah. the chair. Right. The Sh- chair. Sh- Schmeeds. Right. Schmeeds. Is yeah. doesn't talk. But yeah. you guys put him in the chair. As well, I said, we tried. But the, the sexual charisma. It was the but cr- the yeah. text messages we had, the emails, yeah. the, so many freaking emails we received <laughs> about how, who are we going to bring in here? Who are we going to yeah. do that? Right, right. You go and put the guy who doesn't talk <laughs> on camera. I know. <laughs> yeah, it was well, like. Uh, and yeah. then you went like. Let me put it in your terms. Yeah. Super Johnny Carson <laughs> broadcaster voice. <laughs> like you're like, hey, I was waiting for you to like, you know, waiting for Egg McMahon to come around and swing. <laughs> That's it's like, what he was. You could to just do. be yourself. It's not that, that hard. That was him. That was. And him. you're the media critic. Yeah. You never jumped in there and said, hey, use your regular voice. <laughs> I didn't notice it. Oh, another one. You and your dulcet town. Well, tone. Beto, I yeah. really appreciate. That's exactly the, it. Um, the feedback I'm getting just right now. Just because there's a camp. Are we rolling? Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you didn't tell us, Eric, we were on? That's... Uh, like you would ever know. Are we I was just... <laughs> a, and uh, luckily, I was just about to tell the story about oh. middle school swim class. Are we going to edit that? And how I was traumatized. I might, I might. I'm we not have sure. No, no, we have no <laughs> editing skills. No. Though, these guys are... Anyway. Certainly not for All right, here. so welcome to week six of the, the drill. Uh, Beth Duran, Tom Hofarth, and Steve Lowry. As you can see by the graphic below us. Yeah, Schmeeds. <laughs> I don't even know your real name anymore now that you're a star in episode five. And John <laughs> McKelvey yeah. uh, out of Youngstown, Ohio, Cleveland area. He's going to be drafted number one eventually. Apparently. So, I w- so one thing we've done with this show, it's pretty much miraculous that we have five different people with five different crazy schedules. And by crazy, I mean Steve and John. Uh, are just crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Schmeed is always on a plane somewhere. You guys work uh, events all over the place. Lowry's editing a book or two of them. Who mm-hmm. far than I, well, we're just looking for work. Yeah. So yeah. we pretend like we're busy and we're, tweet a, we, we're tweeting a lot. And people are like, oh, you're so busy. You're so busy. No, not really. Thank you. I just make it look like <laughs> Thank you, you are. Because <laughs> after 8 o'clock, I got nothing to post. <laughs> <I> know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done. Well, and the other thing is, as is, is I noticed today, every time we come into the studio, no one seems to be working. So I'm pretty sure hey, that this is the okay, hey, 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 drug hey, operation. Hey, don't <laughs> bite the hand that feeds you. Like, eventually they're going to feed us. Don't oh. talk about the company we're working for right now. I did right say now. they're a successful drug operation. <laughs> I, oh my I wouldn't goodness. seem to criticize. All right, so we're looking I, for I, a new co-host. I wouldn't <laughs> to speak anything about that or just no marijuana. You know, it's legal. As right, these guys are legal. The, the two guys you're talking about are always yeah. stuck on planes, and yeah. you're going to go and right? talk about why right? they can't be Thank here. You. All right. Uh, so we mi- I missed you guys in week five, but there, it's going to happen more often. We're, the drill is going to continue every single week. Yep. And if I'm not here or one of these other guys can't be here, the show is going to go on, and we're going to continue to evolve with it. We keep talking about bringing in guests or, yeah, or people <laughs> who want to promote stuff or right. people who – actually, we're getting people now who want to join us. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, we don't need them. Right. <laughs> really? We got Schmeeds. Like, oh, that's true. Like, it, now that's I think true. what I'm thinking, no, I'm no. making an executive decision here. We got the, if, we if got we're gonna, the core. We got the core. If we're going to bring somebody in, yeah. don't bring them in just for guest sake. Right. Like sometimes like, on Kimmel or they'll have or, uh, or Johnny Carson yep. or Jay Leno, they would have a guest at the end and they just kind of throw them in. You're like, oh, why? Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. Rather hear from that. I'd rather hear from you guys. Right. Because last week you guys were talking about good stuff. It was going yeah. back and forth, good rapport. Yeah. It was fun. How did the critique change all of a sudden? <laughs> I know the minute no, he found me yeah. on camera, he becomes oh, no, no, super. Francis no, it was because you guys had fun. <laughs> you guys, suck. we always have fun. No, we because yeah. I s- we all do this where we yeah. send it out to different friends. We're like, hey, critique this. Yeah. yeah. At constructive criticism. None of you hater stuff. I I stop having sending it to the hater people. Have we got any hater stuff? Well, I, I, all my friends are salty haters because okay. they're like in the mid thirties or early forties and right. they really don't have jobs. They just hate. So their they life, watch it. Right? They hate your life. Right. Their life. They hate theirs. They hate their yeah. Life. They think I'm. They're the ones who think I'm like all over the place. I'm like, yeah. I was uh, this week. I'm going to Indio and Salinas. <laughs> <laughs> so beats Reno oh, oh, or or Provo, Utah without coffee. Oh, oh. But, but um, oh. this show is really fun. Yeah. yeah. For somebody who wasn't involved last week, watching it, I'm like, you know what? Those guys have a vibe, mm-hmm. and everything that you guys talk about, it might be the most mundane thing, or might be a, a serious thing. When you guys went down the drill in the business. But it was fun to watch, and I missed you guys. Aww. And I'm being sincere because we've all worked places that right. suck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. We've all worked. Totally we've yeah, all worked sucks. events where you're getting a lot of money, yeah. and you're like, "This sucks. I can't wait yeah. to leave." On the on the contrary, you say, "I would do this for free." I and, love we it so much. <laughs> and we are. <laughs> exactly. We, we want to do it. If this we wasn't are doing if it. this wasn't down the street from where my mom lives, and I can go and hang out, <laughs> if I had to drive to the valley for this, oh, no yeah. chance. No, right. 
You know who I've heard we're supposed to be, it should be our number one guest, this is the input we're getting, is a table. Because everyone is saying, this is the one thing I'm getting, they're getting tired of looking at our crotches. I'm not. But right? So I, I, I don't it. know. There's look, something look, about our crotches look, that look, really bothers okay, me. First of all, we got one camera yeah, guy. I, I did some work today. I yeah. moved the camera John. a little bit. Right. It, looks, it looks a lot better. Not it's so much good. crotch? Yeah, not but so much but crotch. here's the thing, though. We're getting critiques, and good critiques, by yes. the way, mm -hmm. about tiny details. Yeah. Which but means, it's not about what we're saying. Right. You guys which are boring. Means, or, yeah. Yeah. It's all just fine-tuning. Which means that the drill is successful. And welcome to episode six of The Drill. I am fired up. I know. You are. I know. It calm started down. out so calm bad. Down. Just calm down. Calm down. All right. All right. Calm down. We have new guys in <laughs> town. I'm not even looking at my phone. That's another critique because I don't have a prompter, so I've been looking at my yep. phone. We have new guys in town that are on the verge of being stars. Yes. Two of them. Yeah. But yes. they're playing in teams and markets where oh, yeah. they could be bigger stars, but we're not. Shohei Otani, who in uh, spring training, everybody said, oh, this guy's a bust. Yeah. Send him to the minors. What's he going to do? A stud. Mm -hmm. Zlatan, the god, the lion, Ibrahimovic, a stud. The, through, both of them through their first week. Right. But you guys are all excited about him. Very. It's d because there's a void. Totally a void. Yeah. You, you, we, what do you mean void? When, we, when we're doing stories for hold this. On, hold on, hold on. Wait, no, 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 Tom, also, there's a void. Oh, there's a void this in This is LA called a follow-up, Steve. It's a void if for a star is in L.A., and these okay. guys have filled the void. Yes. As you say. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to say that we, we went back and forth with this email, and we used the term the biggest star, and I think you correctly said slow down. It's really hard to be the biggest star in, when you're in Anaheim yep. or you play soccer. Or because let's weeks, face it, Mike weeks. Trout plays in Anaheim. He's the best baseball player of his generation. He ain't a star here in L.A. People know Mike Trout, but he's not a big well, star. Well, that's the thing. Trout, one of the big knocks on him is that he has no personality. He, doesn't, right. he, does, he does. He just doesn't show it right. on camera. Right. Otani doesn't speak English, so how yeah. how's he getting in the past? Like, oh, he's a superstar. But isn't that isn't that true? Like, especially in, like your business, being on TV and stuff like that, some people just have that thing. Like, Otani, it's like, I, I Because he's be a freak old. right now. It's like Fernando. If you remember Fernando. Well, he if you're was, in L.A., everybody knows right, Fernando. He, he was chubby, so. and he yeah. was this and that. But there was something about that yeah. guy you had to watch. He was guy. doing something nobody knew. He was 20 right. at that time. And he, he had charisma. But you also, you also yeah. didn't know where he was coming from. There yeah. was no Internet. There was no yeah. Google. Yeah. Otani, we know everything about him, yeah. Yeah. what he's done in high school, his parents, how he went to these different academies. But there's still this mystery about him we because we haven't he's heard pitching him speak English. No, it's, yeah. just, it's the speaking English part, which Fernando never had either. And to me, that's the really – if you want to make a connection to Fernando Mania, that, that's probably it. Otherwise, you're right, in two different eras, two different times. Um, but Otani doing two different things. I remember Fernando was an awesome hitter, but they never yes. – but, but he had to bat for himself. Otani, it's funny to watch him DH on days he's not pitching. Right. When on days he's pitching, he won't DH. It's like be in the National League. This is what you got to do every day. Right. Why don't you be, be – I think it's because of the lineup, and if they took him out, then they would mess it up with the DH and all that stuff. Yeah, but the American oh. League is perfect yeah. for him where he gets oh, the days yeah. off. Yeah. Otani's a, a weir an interesting case because most athletes make themselves into stars these days through social media, but he's doing less. And sometimes when you do less, yeah. people come forward. There's you mean he's actually doing it on the field? Yeah. yeah. A lot of concept. Right. More exactly. Actually perform. It's a yeah. lot of mystique behind yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. You guys, you mentioned Fernando could hit. Yeah. But he never actually hit in games, right? He was never no. in a regular lineup. He's a pinch hitter. Once but Otani's like a legit yeah, in the lineup, legit. hitting home runs. Three home runs in three days. But the he's not this free swinger. He's like a he's a contact hitter that seems like like we were talking about last last week. He's like Ichiro. Ichiro was huge hitting home runs in batting practice, but then when his game started, yeah. he was just an on base leadoff guy. But Otani again, he's batting eighth. So they're trying to ease him in after that spring training, and I think eventually, to me, he's a great number two hitter. I mean, eventually, okay. you, you put him Trout and Pujols three in a row. Whew. But also, he's throwing a hundred miles an hour right. in the seventh oh. inning and getting better. And on Sunday, he had a no hitter going through six. Perfect. And we're gonna get into that later on in the yeah. show. Yeah. But that's also when you're doing something that nobody's ever yeah. seen before. Oh yeah. In basketball, every, the, the reason dunk contest is boring because you've seen all the dunks. Right. But you see a guy like Otani, you show up and the, everybody is att attracts to the freak. Yeah. And that's what he's doing yeah. right now. Yeah. Do you know there's there's a name in each sport? If you mention you're doing something in basketball that Wilt did. I'm paying attention. If you're in football and you're doing something that Jim Brown did, I'm yeah. paying attention. And in baseball, if you mention Babe Ruth, Yo, people yeah, go, what? True, huh? Yeah. What? And that's what this guy is doing. The He's candy bar? Babe Ruth. Yes, exactly. He's sweet and nutty. <laughs> but He didn't get it. He didn't get it. <laughs> Shmeej, you got it, right? I did get it. You he got did. it, right? John, you got, I got it? I got it. 
I got it. I got it. Babe Ruth, the candy bar? Yes, sweet and nutty. It has nuts. I got you get it. it. I think he pulled a good one there. No, yeah. no, he didn't get it. The <laughs> Sandlot. He got it. In oh, oh Babe Ruth. Got it. I didn't get that. It's the 25th anniversary of the Sandlot. Exactly. So you can't even say that's a new movie. Is that right? Yeah. 25 years? Wendy, 25 years. Wendy oh, Peppercorn, oh. where's she at right now? Oh, yeah. And the Sandlot crew was at Angel Stadium on right. Sunday. Yeah, they're doing a lot of promotion oh. about that. Good to have Beto back. Ima <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, though, you make one movie, and for the rest of your life, you can go You're make the, appearances. Yeah. Yes. They're doing oh, the minor yeah. league circuit, and yeah. everybody wants to take a picture with Smalls, yeah. yes. who's now all tatted yeah. up. <laughs> right. He's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, uh, the kid actor grows up and it's like yeah we're okay yeah, right we're, these yeah, guys exactly. yeah. forever yeah. for yeah. you you They'll saw angel players all lining yeah, up yeah, to get there them, yeah. with him all right zlatan yes the god line yes. ibrahimovic yeah he didn't score in his second game no bust right oh no totally no. i'm done i'm done <laughs> kansas city had a great goalie that game yeah, yeah. i mean I, and that's I a very good team and he made what 10 saves it was like a team record for a single game so i didn't read anything when are they finally going to start this guy is it the next game or well they I, put him in later to this week is it, it that he's not fit is I, that what's john john you seem to be the somebody galaxy tell guy. me galaxy information um from what i've seen he's basically just not in full game shape yet uh, so he can't go 90 yet he can't go 90 he's, he's coming off the knee injury yeah he's getting yeah. 30 to, and then they'll bump yeah. him up to 60. They'll have him start, and then they'll pull him in the. But you right. get you get more per 30 like minutes that. from this guy than I've ever seen. I mean, he's just like, he's just like in every position. He's, I mean, he took, he could have scored four or five goals. The, the level night. of which he plays is just we're not used to seeing. No, in the right. not at all. Yeah. Especially from a guy who's like 37. No, he's a boy among men. It uh, must be fun. You know, when I was at, when I was a young and like in high school, I was a basketball player. It's pretty good. And I every now and tell. then, I'd be shooting down at the park, and there'd be those guys at the other I'm end. Downey. And Downey, yep. and the guys at the other end, you know, like, eh, they weren't that good. And they say, hey, you want to play? And most of the time you say no because you don't want to get hurt. Bet but every now good. and then you said, uh, yeah, I'll play. And, and then you just dominate. And that must be what it was. Yeah, those guys at the end of the bench who were drinking beer. Exactly. They've been there for three hours. Yes, and we exactly. need one more. And you're 16 yeah. going up against men. And I'd say, yeah. don't make me do this, Dad. Yeah. And it's uh, crazy. And then that's. And you're uh, wearing Chuck Taylors, right? <laughs> You know, my freshman year, I did wear Chuck Taylor. We of course, did. you did. We they did. only had Chuck yeah. Taylor. We had it's well, what, actually, 1908, right? Yes, yeah. 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 Peach Baskets. Chuck was our power forward, so <laughs> yeah, we had. Doctor Nace was out there. No, that's out when Nikes you. were awful. We wore Nikes as a sophomore in high school. The yeah. things fell apart. That was in the seventies. The glue, the seventy-eight, seventy-six, yeah. seventy-eight. I'm actually reading. Uh, the shoes fell apart. Phil Knight's book right, right. now. Right. Shoe, uh, yeah. shoe got I think. Yeah, I think they used his glue back then. They just didn't have any. We're just talking about glue. how bad the shoes. Is that book really good? It's really. I that read on the plane. That book is ghost written by a guy named J.R. Moringer, who ghost wrote Andre Agassi's autobiography, which is the best sports autobiography. I want to read that. Phil book, Knight's yeah. memoir, uh, auto, his memoir. So it's yeah. fantastic. How we'll reference that later. He went out there and he uh, talked with the, how he, his company was called Blue Ribbon. When no. he when he was in, uh, he went to Japan and told these guys, "Hey, sell me your Tiger shoes. Yeah, I have my own company in Oregon." They're like, "What's the name of your company?" He's like, "Blue Ribbon." The reason he was he had to make it up on the spot. He didn't have a company. <laughs> he just wanted to import them in his room. He had all these blue ribbons from winning oh. track oh. beats. Oh. So his sense. company yeah. became Blue Ribbon. It goes on to I'm not done yeah. with it. I read it from Puerto Rico all the way here, and I'm like almost three quarters of the way done. I it was love fantastic. the fact you're reading. I'm doing book reviews. Me right too. Now. Oh I, no, I'm no, doing no. Book okay. reviews on the website, and it's yes, just you are. Thirty, 30 books 30, in thirty days. Right, I always click eleven along. years now. This is the eleventh year of doing this. The books are getting better, but the reading part is such a, a discipline that you have to. No, make Amazon time to does read. a great job of getting yeah. cheap books. Now. That's where I got them. I got them. We're on trying Amazon. to figure out if Tommy can get a little cash out of this. We think his thirty for thirty may predate it the ESPN thirty it did for thirty. Predate it. Yep. Pay us. Yeah, trademark. No, <laughs> Tom, the typical writer never trademarks no. anything. Never. If they always have I ideas know. after somebody steals them. That's exactly. why you guys are writers. I know, totally. Most sports writers came up with nicknames for teams, by the way. Did like you the know Trojans? That? Like the yes. Dodgers. Yeah, the Trojans, exactly. That was a sports writer. LA Lakers? Times. Yeah. Uh, the I Lakers? Know, no, the Lakers Dodgers. are what they, the, the boat they use on the lake in Minnesota. Right, that's what he yeah. told me, yeah. So it's a boat, yeah. yeah. But back in the day, the bridegrooms, there were all kinds of names for the Dodgers that finally stuck. Well, the trolley all, Dodgers, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, sports writers did have a purpose in those days. They were much more powerful than they are now. They also wore suits to games, Which, so get, yeah. let's see I know, we ever see those old things yeah. and everyone's dressed like they're going to <laughs> <through laughs> press, yeah. press. They had a sign that said press. Yeah. Uh, but back to Ibra yeah. Ibra Ibrahimovic. Yeah. Last night I uh, worked at Spectrum Sports Now on the Lakers channel as a host. Yep. And we do a Galaxy Highlight segment. Mm. And the three highlights we had were Ibrahimovic entering the game. We start <laughs> with that. We didn't show any KC highlights. <laughs> right. Uh, Ibrahimovic hitting the post yep. and hitting the post. And it was like, oh, I'm like, you know what? This makes sense because I got into it. When they showed him entering the game, yes. 
the stadium at StubHub, yeah. fans stood up. Now, yeah. I don't know much about soccer coming through. I'll watch the World Cup. Yeah. I'll complain about the Mexico team because, like, that's what you're supposed to do as Mexican. You, you complain should. about the Mexico team. Even yeah. I have no idea what's going on. Hercules Gomez is my favorite player just because I love his name, Hercules. That's an he's awesome. He's Andy from Vegas. Yep. And um, watching uh, Ibrahimovic, and I want to read more about him mm. because yeah, you guys have told me about yeah, it. Yeah, we have uh, thing, yeah. Jim, Tom is, uh, our cartoon is about Ibrahimovic. Yeah. But LA Times, Kevin Baxter had a great story about this kid how growing up in Sweden, he grew oh. up basically in the hood. Yeah. And he created this persona about this arrogance over the top. Yes. Because he had, it was kind of he a false. Self-doubt. A lot of, uh, yeah. a lot of personal issues. That and he was and kicked off U teams for, for this arrogance. Yeah. That's what happens. I mean, you, this guy's fascinating. That's how isn't? you're driven. That's well, I remember the driven. first time I saw him on a pitch, I, I just assumed he was from Serbia or something like that. I, when they well, said his parents from Sweden, came in. Is that where they're from? His parents Sweden. emigrated to Sweden because of yeah. uh, the, the war. When they said Sweden, I thought, oh, no, that's yeah. got to be a mistake. You know, yeah. he's not one of these uh, blonde guys or something like that. Give my and, and you can almost always tell when a guy is like that, real chesty, he usually comes from something where he had to do that. That's to how those lions himself. are, right? They Absolutely. All chesty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you walk in after you edit well, your book, that's huh? that's how I am. I just get done know. editing the book. Oh, those three paragraphs. When I'm listening. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't even know what chesty means. Well, uh, you see I, him. Eric? Hey, if you're in Hermosa, Eric, you see you chesty? chesty guys. Yes. I've been told I've been chesty. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Actually, that was his nickname it in was, college, was but trust- that was a whole other time. We call him trusty, but he just didn't understand. Trusty. Trusty was trustworthy. I've been told at the beach, um, there <laughs> easy, is a, there, is, there is a killer peck warning here and there. Oh, which way is the beach there? Swipe right. Oh, Shut down Doc Swipe right. <laughs> Shut down Doc Weiler over there. The Eric story. That is so OC Newport attitude right there. It was. That is such a Huntington Beach attitude. Irvine Tude. Walk down Maine. Chess Rockwell over here. It's, it's Newport. <laughs> Can we report. talk about stars? No. Please. Let me be the host and direct the conversation. But go ahead. All right. You want no, 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 no. Sorry. You no, let, no, no, no. You no, let sorry. one guy sit in the chair for 20 minutes it's one week. It's a power thing. It's a power thing. It's kind of like Game of Thrones, except it's Game of Canvas Back Chair. This is how we set you up, though. See? Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. So, Ibrahimovic, yes. Otani, they're guys new in town. Right. But L.A., you got to be on a winning team to be a star. Yep. Magic showed it. Kobe showed it. There you go. The Dodgers haven't really had a star because they weren't winning World Series. Right. They were in the playoffs. Clayton. Kershaw exactly. has a star, but you don't know a lot about But a Clayton lot. has his detractors because he yes. doesn't perform right. in, in the, the playoffs. big time. Right now, Steve Lowry, who could be the guy that emerges as a star in L.A.? So, I want us to go around with this. So, who is... See, once right. again, giving direction. <laughs> Just answer the freaking question. Okay, okay. So like you said. Who's the king of hype town? For decades, it's been whoever the best Laker is. Is it Magic? Then it's Jack. Then it's Kobe. Almost uninterrupted. But now that ain't happening. So now, who? I- there is no big star here right now. That's why I think Zlatan and, and Otani are big. Yeah, but who Anaheim and soccer is kind of hard I to be a, ta- a star. So, so I would be... I would be really tempted to say, well, it's going to be whoever is the next big Laker. So to me, that's either either going to be Ball, Ingram, Ingram, or the one I I actually mm-hmm. think Kuzma, because Kuzma's got a bit talk about Chesty. Yes, he is. He's like Kobe, and I think he could be like this. But I'm going to go with a little off script here. Mm. Shocker. Mm. And Dominic and Sue, and I'll tell you why. Mm. I'll tell you why. If you talk to people right now, yes. people I think are getting more and more enthusiastic about. You know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sue plays for the LA Remember? Rams. And I talk to more and more people who actually say, like, you know what? I think I'm going to pay attention to the Rams this year. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of getting into it. The Trojans are going to be down this year, I think, without Sam Darnold. They will actually become our pro football team. I think they could be very successful. And I think Sue, I, I've been watching on social media him coming to L.A. This is a different endemic in Sue than we've seen. He is He's gregarious. He's happy. He's sharing. It's obvious to me that he realizes he's a little past his peak. He's looking towards that other side of his career. I think he wants to start creating a very media-friendly yeah. kind of thing. NFL yeah. Network down the street, yeah. Sports Center up the street. Yeah. And let's not forget, like when the Raiders were here, right? Who no, we the... don't know. We all forget because we don't <laughs> we know. Forget, yeah. I don't remember him. <laughs> He's from Cleveland. Schmeez, do you remember the Raiders in L.A.? Uh, I've seen the 30 for 30. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. Cube. Which is good. true. You were born in what year, Schmeez? 88. Right? Mm. But we still know there are a lot of was people who love the Raiders football there. The Mm. Bo knows. Yeah, I think he was. Okay, so when, when Bo played yeah. in the pro, in the playoffs, yeah, yeah, he was born. So you come on, keep it relevant. Well, here. He, okay, well here's the thing: in football, even though the whole 
sport is set up to, to help the offense. Many times it's the defensive players who become the big stars, whether it's Richard Dent or whether it's um, 85 Bears, uh, right, okay. right, or Good whether it's um, yeah. the, the Legion of, of Boom up in Seattle, whatever. They can become the big there stars. You go. I really think that if this team really starts to roll, a little bit more relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legion of Boom, we got yeah, it. That, that that the defense can actually become a, a big star because you're going to have all these crazy DBs and whatever. I think Sue could actually become. The face of LA sports for a little Aaron, while. Does he need Aaron Donald? In well, there? definitely. Yeah, because yeah, that's, that's the see. Because I remember Lyle Azedo. Yes. Oh, sure. Howie Long. Ted Hendricks. Howie Long. I don't know Hendricks. I know Score. Howie. The broadcaster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Howie played. Long yeah. and Azedo. Lester Hayes. Oh, yeah. No. You don't remember Lester Hayes? No, I was, well, I was a little was kid. Huge. She was yeah. huge. Person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he really? Mr. Yeah. Stickum. Remember that? Eight, nine years old. I remember Bo Azedo and Howie Long. Yeah. And I don't none of the quarterbacks. I don't no, they were all characters. Who do you think? Who's the next big star? I, I like your argument. I mean, I don't see anybody merging from any other team. So yeah. I mean, I'm always I want to see what Walker Bueller is going to do with the with the Dodgers. He's not even on the team. I know that's what I mean. If if you're talking about investing into somebody, that's maybe. Well, what about see the thing with the Dodger players that they have right now, and I, that's why I, I now that I don't cover baseball anymore, that's why I hate baseball because you have so many good personalities that get squashed. By that old mentality of the Puig. good old boy. But Puig, Puig's doing Puig, it. Puig has both. He, he has, has all the potential to do what but, he's but, doing. But, but Puig's always going to have his detractors. Yeah. And yeah. he's learned English. Nobody gives him enough credit yeah. for learning Eng English in such a right. short amount Puig of time. He still has star capability. He does. But you're always going to have the people saying he's so crazy. He's so right. erratic. Now he's off to a slow start. Well, right. Bellinger, I mean, boring. Yes. Seeger, boring. Mm -hmm. But these guys are stud Puig's players. Puig's biggest fan was Vin Scully, who put a light tone on it. Now they're saying, well, Puig doesn't understand the basics. I mean, he's a lot yeah, like it's Kemp. back to what he was. Back when Kemp was first starting. Kemp had the superstar ability, but he was just like, I don't know the game enough. You have to, to play, play the American way of yeah. baseball. Yeah. And yeah. these kids come up. Yeah. Through AAU, or not AAU, but travel ball but or through high school. It's a where personality. You can't sh I have uh, yeah. my friends who are baseball scouts. They tell me that if the kid's too flamboyant, there's a knock down on him oh, because wow. he's too showy. Right. How is that kid going to uh, do when he's in Davenport, Iowa, struggling? Yeah. Where you don't have chest out there, poofing yeah. out there. So that's another knock on it. Where NFL, hey, let's do it. Let's celebrate it like they do in ball. Yeah. NBA, hey, all right, yeah. cool. You have all the Metal World Peace, Nick Young, Express Personality. That's why yes. baseball, you get so sucked into like why the games are boring because yeah. guys go through the motions and you know I, I totally forgot about Puig and he's for me for me to this day he's still the guy if I'm walking by the TV oh he's up oh okay yeah, oh, yeah. The ball to him. Used but to be I don't bad. know what but he's going to do does he have the marketing behind it from the team wise it's, it's always weird. team yeah. first right See, that's it's never player yeah, yeah that's really interesting I mean, there was a time they took Puig jerseys out of Dodger Stadium they just is didn't that want right? anything. Well, he I got mean, demoted when he got demoted but this was even before back when he was on his slide and they didn't know what they wanted to keep him they're trying to trade him he was a bench guy I mean he's back so Sort of in the good graces with you know, with but he had to conform yeah. to the American way of playing right. to do it. Look, he's not but missing the cutoff guys. He's not trying to no. steal every single base. He's learning. He's learning he's the learning team and yet, way. Isn't there always licking this the bat and, yeah. and, and hugging the coach in the dugout? That's, that's a great. Still person. licks the bat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. still yeah. hugs the coach. But that's all cute when yeah. you're performing. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. Isn't there this double standard though, like when it's or no, or yeah, oh okay, with minorities, no, okay. That's what I'm saying. A player comes from Japan or Korea, they get a translator. People are like, oh, well, you have to understand he's coming into a new culture. This guy uh, came from Cuba and basically risked life and limb to get here, coming over on, I, I forget well, what that, he, yeah. he came over we on. We still don't know the rules. And people story. just kind of yeah. expect him to, well, yeah, pick it up, y you know. Because he did right away. Yeah. I mean, and then he kept it going, and then he hit his struggles, and now he's. I think he's done a great job of reviving his personality and his value to the team, so... Yeah, I, if so if, if we have the potential. Major League Baseball done a better job of getting the translators and for the players yeah. in yeah. the clubhouse. Uh, we mentioned Fernando earlier. Heck, he, I, I have lunch with Fernando every now and then. I was like, did you know what Tommy was telling you to come out there? He's like, no, I'll just nod my head. <laughs> <laughs> he pretended like he understood what was going on. No. And but that was a big selling point. They always said, Tommy learned Spanish to talk to Fernando. And no, it, pelota. <laughs> a strike. <laughs> like, duro. Like, like, you, everybody speaks baseball Spanish. Right, like, right. You're going to tell, oh, right now, this situation, yeah. you don't know what's going on. <laughs> but there was actually a movie I saw on HBO. It was called Sugar. Right. Um, That's a great have you seen movie. It? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was first time I've seen it. It's about kids that get drafted yeah. out of the Dominican, mm -hmm. and they get sent to the minor leagues. He's and this in kid, New York. He lives with a family. Yeah, but this kid was in the minor leagues and he was supposed to be the salvation for the little town in the Dominican, but he struggled in a ball. He was this phenom and all of a sudden realized people were hitting it was him. It a cultural thing. And he didn't yeah. like baseball yeah. and he just said, I'm done. And he went to New York. Yeah. And it's really I mean, good and it shows the kids how yeah. he's going to like a church group 
and he's just nodding his head. He had no idea yeah. where he was at. Right. And then the way, like, it was a good, very good scene where one of the veteran guys, or a guy who had been in the mines before, took him to go eat, and he orders French toast. The kids, like four of them, all looking at the menu. And they're like, uh, French toast. So then the kid goes by himself the next day, and he wants to order eggs. And he's like, huevo, huevo. And he's like, I don't know what you're He goes, okay, French toast. French toast. So they would have French toast every single every day. day. And you know. forget about no, yeah, that cultural, cultural change right. to exactly. go from where they're at to where they're I mean, just being on. in a family that has a daughter, and there's this whole weird tension. Oh, yeah, because they, they live on. with the host yeah. family. So yeah. it's called Sugar. Uh, yeah. I think it was HBO I saw it. Yeah. Not yeah. Too yeah. It's up and down a little while, but it's a, it is a really good movie that kind of capsulizes what these guys have to go through. Yeah. Okay. Oh man! So there's a lot of good stuff going yes. on. Baseball, Dodgers are off Did the slow start. Did we get the Otani uh, illustration in there? Jim? Yeah, it got in All there right. while you All guys. Right. Oh, do we have that? Oh yeah. Can you bring it up, please, so oh, we can yeah, reference he did. it? Yes, he did. We have our own resident artist who does a great job, cartoonist. Jim Thompson, who's Jim at Thompson. Uh, Jimmy Tunes. Yeah, go follow What's him. Up now? And he had the showdown, <laughs> right, uh, for Hype Town, which is what it is. Yeah. Anytime somebody new comes to LA, it it's a lot of hype. Beckham, a lot of hype. Anytime you show up, Lonzo, hype. But then it dies down a little bit. Well, we do love when someone chooses to be here because so many people who live That's here chose to be here. Some other cities, if you go there, they might hold up and say, well, wait a minute, let's see what you're about. You, you're, you're not one of us. L.A. is very welcome in this. But like you said, there's always another one coming, right? There's always another person coming in. And, yeah, it's interesting. Like Zlatan, if he has a couple more of the games like he did and they start to lose, off we go to a something kind of fades. Else. Yeah. Well, that's because the knock on uh, MLS guys is that they come here to collect a check and not really do anything. And right. The the AARP jokes. These guys are in their late thirties and yes. they're just here. They're here to come to the United States because nobody pays attention to them. Right. Where in Europe, every single move yeah. is critiqued. This yeah. Is it's retirement. Done. This is retirement. But, uh, but home. the I Manchester United manager actually, when he spoke about. Zlatan coming over. Is that Pep Guardiola? Uh, no, I, I, uh, I, I Sir something. Mourinho. 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 Yeah. Jose Mourinho. Yeah. Oh. All right, I, I know. I just know two coaches. When he yeah. was, <laughs> when he was talking Mourinho. about it, it sounded as though he was like, "Yeah, well, it's always sad when you see a guy go down like this." <laughs> <laughs> he basically sound, it was talking as if he either died or he yeah. retired. Yeah. 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 Is it like when NBA players go play in Europe at the end of their career? Yeah. Kind at of the same end. thing. Is but that the perception of it? Pretty much. Okay. But from what I've heard, he turned down a hundred million to go to China. Come on. No, I'm not kidding. Oh God, yeah, China would pay that. And of course, Wait, how much did he make with the Galaxy? It, three million. Three million. So he turned down a hundred million to go to China. No, Center. come on. I, I think he's thinking long. Wait, what would you say, Schmitz? I saw this on Sports. Center. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Thank that you. is true. There Sorry. it is. Yeah, Confirmed. so I, th I think he's thinking long term. And again, this is, I think on the very first show we did, we talked about this. I think the, the, the best thing that's going to happen to L.A. sports is that Los Angeles has reasserted itself that if you really want to have a big career and make a big splash, you still got to come to L.A. or New York. And really, L.A. is the place. If you're young, this is where you want to be to kind of make your brand, as, as they say. Or you want to be on the drill and create a brand like Steve Lowry is doing. Yes. Our favorite book author. That, that was it for the drill. Mm -mm. Sound mm -mm. Oh, we do have sound effects. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like you're at the dentist. Yeah, that's awful. That's yeah, awful. We, we need a better sound effect. <laughs> now. Oh, my mouth hurts. Uh, it is time for Tom Hofart, yes? the sports media critic for the LA Daily News Group or whatever you guys are calling it. Uh, whatever I'm doing these days. Orange County News. Wait, no. Uh, Southern California right. News Group, right? I'm in a freelance situation. Aren't we all? Yeah. Yes, yes, we are. But he's right. a We're living day to media day. critic. Aren't we all? Uh, you guys can go and check out the website, fartheroffthewall.com. That's where we archive everything that we've been talking about. Hyperlinks to everything. Tom does a great job with it. Also, right now, I'm going to get into this business. You have your 30 for 30 books uh, series. That every single day, you're recommending a book. It's all the baseball book. All the new baseball books all come baseball. out. All baseball. Oh, sweet. It's pure baseball, all the ones that come out this time of year. Because it's, it's, it's hard to sort of sort through them. There's a lot of titles that don't get a lot of publicity. So... My job is really to sort of find the ones, the, the gold mine. Uh, That's of incredible that you, every year there's 30 baseball books. Oh, at out. least. Yeah. I, I gotta, I, now there's more than probably uh, four or five. Do dozen you read them I, all? I have to read them all to a certain extent to get the gist of it. But because I'm not writing huge extensive reviews, I don't need to read it all. Okay. I just need to get enough to, to get the flavor of it. And it, the best part to me is if I do read a book, it's because I want to. I want to go cover to cover and, and there's a few books that really capture there's one that you posted today bob tewksbury the former yeah, pitcher that was about one, yeah. the mental side yeah. of baseball and there's actually a, a one i posted today the today's day 10 of it uh i posted one it's just a picture book of cuba it's really cool just oh. to see a lot of the background this guy took three years and went to cuba and, and uh just kind of experienced it from the street game to the old timers 
And it's, it's uh, I mean, picture books are just, they tell a thousand words, obviously. Right. But Those are easy to read, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> are, are a lot of the books kind of analytic books? Do you get All a lot different of that kinds stuff? of books. Yeah. All different kinds of books. Well, there's one that you posted about the two brothers in Texas. Yeah. Or the yeah. Louisiana. And that was more of a Christian book. It's funny, just because these two guys grew up this way with a pastor who was, uh, it said, our dream is for you to play in this stadium in Louisville, or in, uh, not Louisville, but Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana. And they ended up doing it just by fluke. And, and so, yeah, there's just, I try to get kids' books. If a kid's kids' book mm. comes into it, um, I'll do that. I, a lot of history books, a lot of current events, like th this review of, uh, I, I did, uh, Davy Johnson has a new book. The that's coming. Angel, the Dodger the Dodger, Dodger manager? former manager. Yeah. So there's two kind of parts to this book about where he's sort of campaigning for himself as a Hall of Fame manager. What? And plus well, he was with the Mets, right? Right. Yeah. This, plus there's the, and he was with the, the time the he was with the Fox Dodgers. Fox and McCourts. Yeah. yeah, he should yeah. be a saint then. No, there's <laughs> you all campaign kinds for that. <laughs> right. No, there's all kinds. It's weird. It, he talks about how his relationship with Kevin Malone and how he didn't like where the team was the going. The new sheriff? He blew it all up. Yeah. So, so yeah, you, you can do a lot of this kind of. Tommy, wh why do you think it is that, like, we don't see this kind of, uh, like, with basketball books or, or, or football, which is the most popular sport? Why yeah. is baseball such a popular thing to write about? Well, the historically, they say the smaller the ball, the better the writing yeah. about it. So, golf, golf is boxing, the best. Yeah. which has no ball. Baseball is kind of in that. In that league and yeah. I, I don't know if that's true it's just that I think baseball was the one the sport that has the history behind it yeah. the nostalgia right yeah, the, the, yeah the and everybody comparison. played it at one point yeah. yeah whether you were good or not you always you read these it. books where there's a certain point where you say between eight and twelve I fell in love with the game right. and then there's you know and I didn't fall in love with the game yeah <laughs> or it's like ah this is cool but it's boring then like, I got I don't hit, play. hit by the game oh I got hit by a pitch <laughs> I never yeah. went back right. right hit the curveball yeah I set the little league record most hit by pitches in a single season on purpose as a pitcher or batter as a batter oh okay really how many couldn't pitch uh it was like twenty eight eight and 22 wow. games. Oh, that's Look at awesome. you. Oh First of all, you had 22 games. Good for you. That's a good league right there. Yeah, it was the pretty good. The uh, snow league. thawed out out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The story that's On the out now by is the lake. Chase Utley uh, coming close to the record hit by pitch career. No kidding. He's close to 200, Minnie Minoso? Right? Yeah. Minnie Minoso? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ron Hunt, Ron Hunt, I think it was. Oh, it's Ron Hunt? I think oh, so. Oh, okay. Masters this weekend. Yeah. Now, look, I'm not a big golf guy. I play golf three, four times a year when it's free. And if you want to invite me to a charity event, I will be there. No problem. I have <laughs> right. nice looking club. I look the part. Travis Matthew hooks me up. I am legit in mm. pictures. Right. And I'll drive it pretty good. Sweet. And then the rest, you, yeah, you're on your own. <laughs> I'm good at 19th hole. Fantastic. Um, I was watching the Masters. Right. Not intently, not like, oh, my God, I need to watch this. Yeah. But I was paying attention to it because yeah. when you're the best of the best and you have the same back to the traditions of what's going on. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, every single guy is coming up. I'm Googling. Mm -hmm. Patrick Reed shows up. I Google him. I'm like, all right, this guy is cool. Wait, he went to Georgia, Augusta. Like, then on his Wikipedia says he was kicked, expelled from school, but doesn't say why. Right. So I just let it go. Yeah. I'm like, all right, whatever. This guy played. Come Monday, all of a sudden, this guy's a terrible person. Right. I had no idea about it because I'm looking, okay, his wife used to be his caddy. Yeah. This is cool. What a moment. That's yeah. great for him. I knew he that he wasn't really liked because of what his Wikipedia said. Right. And then I'm looking at Tom sends me the notes for the drill. Patrick Reed, how CBS just completely ignored the story. What are you what are talking about? Well, the most uh, most media critics now are taking CBS to task for not telling the whole story about Patrick Reed's background, which I think is an easy target for CBS, except that you need the time and the place to kind of flush a story like that out, right. which is what a lot of the writers covering the event did. So what's the story? So the story, it, well, it's, it's, I don't want to even waste a lot of time with it. You can go look it up. We'll have a link to the stuff. Yeah. But there's kind of two parts, his, his background and then his current situation with his family. There's some weird dynamic going on. Yeah. With his wife and his parents, and and they don't get along. Apparently, oh, they don't talk. Yeah, but it's it's like a lot but of families. But that's every family. It's I mean, yeah. every family has, has some a, weird dynamic. That so way. the criticism was, why didn't CBS bring it up? Obviously, the reason is the Masters doesn't want bad news to sort of corrupt their coverage, which is somewhat the case. CBS could have done this if they wanted to, but to me, again, it was there's a time and place for all this stuff, and I think the other media covered it just as well. They could have mentioned it maybe in the butler cabin after the round was over. But, again, that's just not the proper time to do it. So, um, plus, on Sunday, the, the story was Jordan Spieth chasing him and, um, and Fowler almost catching Wait, him. So I, I heard the part about how Spieth and he don't get along. And right. Spieth right. made the comment, like, he's never been in this situation. The pressure's on him. That was fine. But then when I come back on Monday and yeah. I read 
that he doesn't talk to his family. Like, that, like, There's a lot of weirdness. I know. Well, that's the thing with me that when I do uh, play-by-play right. for boxing because most of these guys have a jacked-up oh, background. Yeah. So what we do fighter meetings, and we're, these guys start telling me, I'm like, hey, do you want me to say this on the, <laughs> right. on the yeah, air? Right. They're like, yeah, I have no problem. You know, I'm my, my parole officer this or wow. my ex-wife yeah. this. And my, well, I'm, like, oh, I'm like, okay, you want the you know, boxers are more open. They're, they yeah. want you to tell their story. That's why boxing is beautiful because these guys have so many yeah. different oh, yeah. personalities and characters that you meet. And That's how they got there. But then I get there, and guys are uh, – sometimes I'll get some criticism. You didn't bring this up. I'm like, right. well, it was a hell of a fight. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. what's going on on the air. You I think baseball to. is more where you tell you the story of what's going on. But if the action is there – so hard. I can see why CBS wouldn't get into it because I'm watching this event as a casual fan. I'm like, dude, these guys are going back and forth. Right. This was fun. Then on Monday and then today on your notes mm. – I'm like, well, do I even want to know that? I is it the time and place for yeah. it? I think it's fair game to talk about what happened to him in college. And, in fact, you could even spin that into something about a, a, he was a young guy. He probably made some mistakes. And now he's turned his life around. And, good, and so you could actually talk about that. And there's an Augusta that. connection because that's yes. where he ended up. The family stuff. Let's face it. We all have families. There's stuff going on in families. I, I would be very uncomfortable more calling someone More stuff on will that. come out now. Now that he's right. master champ, we'll, we'll learn more about this. And, and maybe somebody will do the take the time and the investigative reporting to sort of I think that's more for like Golf Channel and yeah. ESPN yeah, exactly. after they yeah. talk about yeah. it. But when you're doing the actual yeah. broadcast and the guy's going down yeah. for 18th or it's he's the in the World Series, corner. you don't bring up that stuff in a World Series game. You're, you're tuning in to see the tournament, not the, so much. For well, that. Tom and I were talking about this earlier. One of the problems is in most sports, basketball, football, baseball, we know so much about them. You wouldn't even have to met. You would just say, oh, yeah, and you know he had his college problems. Everyone go, oh, yeah, college yeah. problems, off we go. But like you said, with golf, except for, so for, for Tiger Woods that's and it. maybe Jordan Spieth, we don't know most of these yeah, guys. I don't, so know, like, uh, I don't know who they know. are. When I'm covering a golf tournament, it's it's very hard because I got to know like 144 bios ready to pull up at a certain moment if the guy has a great right. round. So it, there's so many guys you don't know about until you have to know about them. And now is when we have to know. And about let's face it, degree. golfers can be kind of freaks because they're they're not with teams. Really? Yeah. They're, they're, eight, right. they're eight year old prodigies. Yeah. Yeah. Right, they're going to exactly. be freaks. Right. And they're not right. with teams where they're being watched yeah. by coaches like, and whatever. We golf to get loaded. These Hamlet. guys golf for millions. Yeah. yeah, but that's the thing. They're getting money. They're by themselves a lot of time. They probably can get into. The, uh, golfers we all saw Tin Cup. Problem. Yeah. yeah, we've seen Tin Cup. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have a rant this week, Tom? Yes, I do. Uh oh, hold on. The views and opinions on Tom Holmfarth are his. Because I know we've reached a point in this show where we've, we've, we've hit the 40-minute mark, perhaps. <laughs> but anyway. Let the heat out. Let the heat out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, oh again, going back to Otani. Perfect game on Sunday for seven innings. Gives up a hit uh, in the seventh inning. One, one out. Now, there's a broadcaster in this town, Victor Rojas, who covers the Angels, who believes it's not the proper etiquette to say there's a no-hitter or a perfect game in progress. He thinks he's going to jinx it based on the fact he once played the game and he believes that's just code for I'm not going to do this. Right. Problem is he now puts his analyst Mark Gubiza into the same situation where Mark can't talk about a perfect game. Otherwise, you know, he, he creates tension with his partner. He's got to back his partner up in this. So this is not just an ongoing uh, thing just from Sunday. This is this is it has a history. Yeah. So I did not watch the game live. I taped it and I watched the, the replay on Monday where I sort of said, well, if I was a fan watching this game, how would I know what's going on? Right. And what the Angel broadcast now does to compensate, which to their credit, uh, they do this now. They do a lot more graphically. Right. On the score, car, on the score bug in the seventh inning, it said, Otani perfect through six. Right. Or they'll show the scoreboard with all the zeros. Yeah. And they'll explain it. So, but uh, actually, I was kind of surprised in watching the replay that Victor did a decent job of keeping people up with what was going on. Right. He would say, 15 up, 15 down. He would say, not a runner is reached base, uh, but he will not use the words. The only time the words were used was, uh, I, I wrote it down, was uh, what Mark Gubas said at one point. Um, uh, Gubas said in the fourth inning, perfection so far for Otani. And then he goes, uh, oh, as far as the command of his pitches are going. Oh, Lord. So he really had to sort of backpedal on it. someone should, should play for them the most famous baseball call in Los Angeles history, which is Vin Scully calling Sandy Koufax's perfect game, which he used perfect game from about the fifth inning on. Yeah, it it's not going to jinx anything. And to be honest, if I was his, him, his employer, I would say, look, bud, it's hard enough for us to get noticed in this town, okay? Yeah. Now we finally have this star. People might just be walking by their televisions or something like that. It's, it's a service to the viewer. Yeah, they might just be going by like this. If you're not saying constantly, perfect game, perfect game, perfect game, they might not stop. And there is a this point is in silly. the game where you say, 
probably after the fifth or sixth inning, you you, you really do sort yeah. of say, hey, if you're not watching the game, call your friends. Right. There's something special going on here. So. And, in fact, we were talking about I was watching the movie For the Love of the Game <laughs> uh, the other day with Kevin Costner, and it was so wonderful because Vin Scully is in that movie. And from the about the fourth game. inning on, he's talking about the perfect game, the perfect game, the perfect game. And then every now and then Steve you Lyons comes in and says, that's right, Vin. <laughs> <And> you know, <laughs> uh, Vin Scully ad-libbed that entire scene. Yeah, yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah. they told him you were going to call a perfect game, and he completely ad-libbed I mean, there everything. was a great line like you're gonna write, says, Like yeah. you're going to write stuff for Vin Scully. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. Can, can you imagine? Like, uh, and okay. you do know who saved the perfect game in that movie. Who? The second baseman. Yes. Who is it? I don't know. The Angels broadcaster, Jose Mora. <sighs> My Lord. Jose Moda <laughs> was the know. second baseman <laughs> in that movie who saved wow. the perfect game when he dove for it. Wow. So because the they went to Fullerton together. Oh, that's right. That's right. With Costner and Fullerton. Yeah. So the point is that Victor is not the only one who does this. Yeah. He's just the one in town that does it the most. And actually, the Dodger broadcasters now, Joe Davis and Oral, will sort of joke about it like, oh, we're going to jinx it. We're going to say, right. you know, and the fans will, will rag on him for it. And then they'll laugh, have a good laugh about it. But. Scully was always adamant, you don't become the story, and that's what Victor right. has sort of become in this case every time there's an Well, Boog Shiambe, who does ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, yeah. will get all these people tell, tweeting him, you d jinx this. He's like, yes, I hate your team. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't like your team. Uh, uh, and Len Casper also with the Cubs. Yeah. Every single time. you'll see, I follow their Twitter. They're both good. It's, yeah, I hate the Cubs. <laughs> I hate this. I'm against you. I'm the reason they didn't do this right. today. Like, yeah. They have no control. Yeah, in, in that it, booth. it's just it's unprepared. And like I said, I'd have a problem with it if I was the Angels. I'm like, I need people to watch my team. And if you're not telling them they're doing great things, right. hey, this guy just hit for the cycle or whatever, you're killing me. You know, it's just another. Wait, John, you work a lot of baseball, college baseball. They do that stuff. Yeah, uh, though it depends. You'll have actually you're uh, not gonna get no hitter in college. Eight hour baseball games. Yeah, that would <laughs> be for, that would be uh, really something to see. Although they had more last year than well, Florida had, had one recently. Yeah. Um, you get a broadcaster. Those if if something's going on, like you'll say something about like fifth inning or something okay. like that. Fifth inning is a good um, time. Yeah. And yeah, they try to uh, they acknowledge the jinx like on free throws and stuff like that. I'm I right. say acknowledge it. It's absolutely. You have no control as a broadcaster. Yeah, absolutely. But it's always I love you know always. Oh, this guy's eight for nine on the night free throws clank. Yeah. Yeah, and the I broadcaster love the, jinx. You I make love fun the of yourself. fact that the broadcaster who sits a mile away is going to jinx it if he says something. Meanwhile, there's 50,000 people saying, keep pitching a no-hitter. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. right. The yeah. graphics guys really have to be on their toes and keep yeah. people informed. And that yeah. was the business. Right, Eric? With Tom Hofarth. Absolutely. You all right? You look business. quiet today, man. You He's good? a graphic guy. I mean, we haven't brought him in much. Well, I'm well, sorry. No, I mean, He's all talked out. They all have a microphone. They can just jump in whenever they want. Oh, that's true. Wasn't Eric going to do his hockey match? He's waiting for No, we're not talking hockey right now. I think we we that. Part of the show with <laughs> angels and soccer. Now you want to get into hockey, <laughs> <We're> <laughs> which into I have hockey. no problem with it. Yeah. What? What you say? Hey, the streets? hockey teams are the only teams that are in the playoffs yeah, in Los Angeles. Right. Uh, have we started the playoffs? Mind you, don't get me wrong. Playoffs start Wednesday. I'm yeah, all about the Kings tomorrow. when they start winning. I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric, what do you? What, what, yeah, bring it over here. What? What? You got <laughs> something? Bring it over here. You got? You got? You got something over there? Yeah, swipe right. left. Wait, what do you got? Oh, there he is. Look at that. Look at right. Oh, so, no, I went left on you. <laughs> Those are spectacular <laughs> pants. Yeah. yeah, I got the right. hockey minute. You all got right. the hockey minute. All right. Yeah. First of all, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You're 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 all of a sudden creating your own segments here. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, this is how really? much hockey we talked on the show. Blue line Eric. Let's wait, wait, go. wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This wasn't part of our email and text chain that Eric all of a sudden has his own segment. This is how it works. Did you guys sign off on this? Mm. I well, was on the panel last week. I oh. Think I oh. <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> Eric, what is your full name? Eric Schmid Zaber. <laughs> This is the first word here. Asian of it. Cajun. <laughs> this is kind Asian of like Cajun. the Napoleon Asian. Hold putting on. his crown on by himself. Wait, you're serious about this? You want to do a I hockey am. minute? Do it. He, they're both in the playoffs. Right, we wait, wait hold on, hold on, hold on. You're from Louisiana and you're Vietnamese and you're talking hockey from Canada. Orange County. Okay. Oh, well then yeah, go yeah, ahead. Of yeah, course yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I'm gonna lead you in. Ready? Da na 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 na. Da na na. Okay, go. Okay. Wait, we're really doing this? <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me get my own uh, hockey minute. You, yes, time you, me, please. You only get yes. 59 seconds. You Give gotta me a get 30 time too, now. so I can switch it up. All right. And go. Okay. L.A. Kings, Ducks in the playoffs. Mm. Kings start tomorrow <laughs> against Vegas. Mm. Hold on, hold on. Start this over. Whoa, start this whoa, over. Start wrong? this over. You're trying to sell me why you should have the Eric Schmid minute here. Yes. Yeah. And you come out with that. If you're in the truck and the guy says, hey, I'm going to sell you on there, and you're going to be like, 
Whatever, right. whatever. You took Ima- about the imagine you had to do a, a graphic for that. This r- is your moment. Yeah. You took about the it's, first quarter Oh, you know what it is? Segment. It's because he's not in the chair. Oh. You want the chair? chair? Yes, I want, you want the chair. Come on. Oh, the chair. that's what it is. Give him the go. chair. Here we go. All right. Give start. him the chair. Uh, no, no, hold on to your mic. You don't need this. All right. Here's the shining moment. The hockey minute with Eric E. Bear. How do I look? J.S. Jaguar over here. <laughs> Ready? I Wait, are you really a hockey fan? I'm a huge hockey fan. You're all a Ducks fan? All the time. Ducks, yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And Sorry. ready, go. Go. All right. L.A. Kings and the Ducks in the playoffs. Kings start tomorrow against Vegas. I think this is a tough matchup for Vegas. The Kings are that kind of heavy playoff experience team that's going to give them a lot of problems. Um Andre Kopitar, Dustin Brown are real hot right now. They're both coming off of four goal games each. I think the Kings are going to take this series. The Golden Knights have how a many, great... How many games? Hey, man, don't interrupt. Let him go. He's on a roll. He's on a roll. Yeah. That. that was a roll? Yeah. yeah. Right. It's like the German bomb Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> He's on a roll. Hey, the Knights have a great first line. They have a couple guys that are plus 30. How but much time is left? Typically in the playoffs, that's not going to be enough. I, I like the Kings in sevens. Uh, Kings and seven. All right, what about your Ducks? You're running out of time. For the Ducks. Ducks. Let's go. Going to be a, a great series. <laughs> Sharks. I think the injuries are going to be playing? the biggest thing. San Jose Sharks. Okay. John Gibson's banged up. Cam Fowler won't play in this series. I like Brandon Montour That's to step up for him. That's longer than a minute, him. bro. Mm. Ryan hey. Kessler's been banged up all year. Let him shine. Yeah. It's going to be a great Canadian series. Minute. I like the Ducks in six. <laughs> Eric, aren't the, aren't six. the Sharks? Hey, hey, he's still six. on fire. Don't Sorry. interrupt. No, no, Ducks no, no. There you go. That's, 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 that's a good minute. That's a good minute. How about how, how about the whole tournament? Who ends up in the final? Oh, John's a big penguin. All right, so here we go. <laughs> that was your, your hockey minute plus the penguin. on the drill. Pens? You like the pens. It no, no, no. We're done talking hockey right now. You know this. Tom, you write a hockey story. What's going to happen? Nobody's going to read it. So yeah. right now we're 48 minutes into the show, you need to watch and we still got to talk. I I love right. going to the games. Absolutely, I'm going to the Kings. I'm going to the Kings. I'm a big Kings Which fan. Game are you going to? As soon as I get free tickets, I'm there, <laughs> and I'm going to the Ducks game with you. You want to go? We're going to game two, right. Saturday uh, night. I'm busy, but uh, <laughs> for for game six, Beto, we're going. Can I get in your suite? I have suite. I got tickets though. Okay. Always be nice to interns who end up becoming vice presidents. Woo-hoo! That's rule number one. I got I got people, okay. man. I got people. Okay. I'm sponsored. All right, I'm out. That's All right. right. That was your hockey extra minute with uh, Jay as you over there. Woo. Use the applause meter. For a second there, I was feeling like the Beatles' first drummer. I thought that was it for What me. does that mean? Mm. Yeah. The Beatles had a drummer originally, and they got rid of him, and he's they got well, Ringo Starr. Like, he was more like the Spinal Tap His drummer. His name was Pete What does Best. that mean? The spinal Pete Tap Best. drummer just died. That's right. They explode. Right. They explode. Oh, you yeah, exactly. No, no, no. Yeah. They implode. Help me here, please. <laughs> yeah. Help me, John. I got nothing. Oh, come on. The Beatles? All right, Long Beach Grand Tap. Come on. I know all of them. Long Beach Grand Prix this weekend. It's a debacle on the beach. Love it. A lot of cars going out there. Have you guys ever driven in a celebrity race? Never driven. No. Never driven it, but I... That's what I want to do. Next year, I want to be in the celebrity race. Beth Durant from the drill. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They teach you how to do everything. It's supposed we'll, to be a we'll be blast. Your pit crew. We, there yeah. it is. No, I just want you guys in the bar. We'll While your, I drive, you guys drink. We'll change your tires. You know, I, I went to... You could change the tires. I went tires. to college. <laughs> yeah. What's this? We. Me. <laughs> John, I got you a VIP. Don't worry. I Thanks, take care of you. I'm not, I don't I want, want you to see Schmeeds in a jumpsuit. It's going to be 100 degrees and you want him in a yeah, jumpsuit. We can do that oh. right now. I went to college at Long Beach State. I lived in Long Beach. I actually worked at the Press Telegram for a number of years. And what I love about the Grand Prix is no city, including LA during the Olympics, embraces a sporting event like Long Beach embraces yeah, the Grand do. Prix. When you are out there during this week, there is a constant, you just, it's constant. And in every bar, these people show up. And because the Grand Prix happens every year, it's the same yeah, people that show up. It's a party. Up. It's awesome. I've never been, people. but it's a party. Oh, it's Beautiful fun. People. I only went once when I was working at ESPN as a guy throwing out the T-shirts. So it, <laughs> people were like, hey, give me a shirt, give me a shirt. And right. It just seems like a great time, but oh. I could never have a chance to go. And now that I live in Long Beach, I still don't have a chance. I'll be gone this weekend. I'm going, oh, I'm going yeah. with John Steinbeck. What? I'm going to Salinas. Wow. Yeah, Good I'm, for you. I'm working I'm not, I'm going to Canary Salinas. <laughs> 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 Number three murder I, capital in I've the United to, States. I've been to the Applebee's in Salinas, which is like yeah. But yeah, but yeah. I'm working boxing in Salinas uh, oh, Saturday cool. night, so it'll be fun. So I, I'll miss the Grand Prix. I know Tom, you love the Grand Prix. I love IndyCar racing and just in general. When I was yeah. a kid, uh, Danny Sullivan. No, no, no. Yeah. When I was a kid, uh, Parnelli Jones used to race in this thing. Yep. And he owned the Firestone Station on Hawthorne Boulevard in Torrance, which is, I think is still there. He would bring his car to the Firestone Wait, Station. Parnelli Jones is a real person? Yes, oh, yes, yes, he's yes. Real, no way. Oh, oh yeah, he's a real yeah. Book. He wrote a book and everything. No, I know the name. I didn't know it was yeah. a real person. Oh, there's a great story about Parnelli Jones. Maybe I'll tell you on another story. Or just link it on the yeah. wall. 
So he would bring his car, and you could just like touch the tires and just like sit in the car. It would be cool. awesome. So when you're a kid, you loved IndyCar just because of that. Here's a guy that would be. That's why I never got into NASCAR. NASCAR cars just yeah. look like the cars on the freeway. They are. I was like, they are. Eh, yeah. Okay, and they just do yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. I'd always cars watch are like spaceships. Yeah. Indy 500. I'd always watch oh. it because it was AJ Foyt, yeah. Danny Sullivan, because they would show up on Channel Seven early in the morning. We were saying yeah, that's yeah. the one event we haven't covered that I would I kill really? to cover. Yeah. I would love they to go to Indy 500. Yeah. Just go Memorial Day, right? It's supposed to, yeah, right? Yeah, it's Memorial Day. Then go. Yeah, I should. Yeah. But you, you have you to got nothing stopping you. You have to hook me up with that free thing that so you do, which is you get everything for free, like heart you, surgery, you free. Have a, you have a credential. <laughs> Just go. What credential? What, what credential are you talking about? You tell them Steve Lowry from it's The Drill. A general credential. Oh, that's right. You now right. work on a legit on-air broadcast around the world. And they'll say, oh, is that the one with the hockey minute with Eric? And I'll oh, say, yes. 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 Correspondent. Yes. 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 Correspondent. All right. So we're sending Larry to oh. we're Indianapolis. We're getting the celebrity event. Then we know we made it. Dude, next year, that's my goal. All right. Totally. You should, I, I covered that one year. And George Lucas. Dude, if Steve Hartman year. can get in, I, I Gene can Hackman get in. Won this thing once. Gene oh, Hackman, really? I, would, I was at the event when Gene Hackman won this thing. It was crazy. The Hackman racing the it? The stars that would get in this thing, yeah. The year I covered I, it, the dude who played Will Smith's um, cousin in uh, Fresh yeah. Prince. Alfonso. What was his name? Alfonso Ribeiro. Yeah, he, he, he won, and they he were all the saying dance. that he could have raced in the real rate. That da, apparently he's da, gifted da, da, that way. Da, 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 yeah. We're not doing the Carlton. Oh no, white people doing Carlton. Sorry. That's it. Show's right. over. That's, That's been it. the drill. Be loved by anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not unusual <laughs> to be loved by everyone.